okay we continue again our courses and the topic still in in uh, still same as previous week uh, the room yeah the room library we continue with the room part two and specifically we talk about database migrations okay so at first um we have to see or we have to know the concept of database migrations yeah so uh, the database migration is the process of migrating the data from one or more source database to one or more target database by using a database migration service but in this case um, we are not migrate from uh, one source to another source well, uh, what we do is simply upgrading the data scheme okay so uh, we can do that easily uh, with help of the room persistent library that support incremental migrations with the migration classes to um, upgrade the database from versions one to version two and to another incremental versions okay so how it works at first um for example here uh, as you can see here for example i have a table user and at first at version one i have uh, these two fields the id integer and the name as strings and then uh, we upgrade to, to the version two for the next application update for the next up, app update and we add the third field the email strings so what happened here is when the user getting an update that uh that the user still in the version one is getting an update from the play store and the user installed it run the applications call the database the room will upgrading or do the migrating from version one to version two okay and uh, maybe uh, i launch another versions in the play store and then i have version 3 which is in this case i add i add the password string the the fourth field in the same user so i alter the table okay and then um, the user will get the updates from play store and then the room will run or execute the migrations from version 2 to version 3 okay so uh, that's how the migration works especially with the room and uh, the room provide the migration classes and it's simply like um, the abstract classes that you have to provide uh, the start version and the end version so um, migration 1-2 underscore 2 here means that um, this function will be called will be executed um, if the applications users still has version 1 and the current database is uh, larger than version 1 it will uh, execute this uh, migration first so it will call this migration from version 1 to 2 and then it will execute the the X SQL the query uh, that you see here and as you know it uh, the from version 1 to version 2 I add the emails string here therefore I call the alter table user the table user at column email and it used the type of type of text okay so um, the migration from version 1 to version 2 simply add the column of email with the data type of text um, in SQLite there's only simple data type there's no varchar and for string type you should use text okay so um, you, you may have a lot of migrations method or, or migration method here from one to two maybe you can add one uh, from two to three like you see here and as you can see in the first entry we add the password so therefore here as you can see when the migration happen it will call or execute this sql alter table user at column password text okay of course you can do the jump migrations yeah for example from one to three it happens when this user doesn't 
uh, have a long time does not update the application so it's still the user still use the version one however the application in the play store already have version three so in this case happen we can do the jump upgrade that's from migration one to three but um this not op this one is optional yeah no um there's no obligation to create the jump upgrade the jump migrations because uh when that user update the applications uh the migration one to two will be executed first and then after that the two to three immediately after this migration done it will execute the two to three so even though the user the user still in the version one it's eventually will get will have the version three by executing the migration from one two to three but of course you can add the one to three immediately and and we can define the migration goes from version one to three in single step making the migration process faster this is uh, very handy if uh, there's a lot of query that you have to uh, execute uh, during the migrations okay so as you can see here um from one to three i simply copy and paste um the two query from migration one to two and two to three into a single migration as you can see here and um its individual migrations should be uh, defined or initiate in the database builder rooms here as you can see here um we should called the method at migrations and then we listed all of the migration that you have created migration migration one two two migration two three migration one three and so on and so forth yeah separate with comma okay and then this is the destructive migration in some cases migration is not needed and it's okay to clear all record from the database during the upgrade version then you may call fallback to destructive migrations so as you can see here we may add these add migrations i forgot to add this from this one and you can call this fallback to destructive migration means that the old data from the user apps will be completely destroyed and um and it recreate the, the database with the new scheme tables and uh and, and so on but be careful with this uh, method because um in some cases like if you create a games where the the user progress start in the sklite table and then you call this it may destroy or uh, delete the user progress as well okay so um the user may might have may have experienced uh, uh, a bad situation here and eventually they will um, angry with the developer and eventually so uh, they can uh, give bad rating for your application okay so be careful when you using destructive migration make sure that you only um, do this if there is no important data uh, uh, speci uh, specifically the important data that related to the users stored in the previous version of uh, the database okay now um, let's jump into the tutorial at first uh, we are going to uh, uh, open the previous week projects and we work okay the first part is utility okay so um, we need these util uh, files because um, there's something that we have to address and the first thing we notice that we already have the building database methods that have been called in different places and it will be better if we centralize that method within a single function in the utility file let's take a look at your um, view model so as you can see here uh, we uh, we call this database builder in the detail to do view model also in the to do list view model we call this database builder in the refresh function and clear class fang function so it will be better if we remove or sorry if we um place those functions in a single uh, utility files and then we can uh, directly reuse the functions in diverse area okay so uh, first we create 
the package to handle the util to create the util so we start with creating the package util as you can see here and then we create a new kotlin class file and uh, set name as util and it should be file enter so we have this util empty files and at at first um we define the db name all right so in my cases i already has this to do db as the db meaning i'm going to copy it so i create this fall this this constants yeah db name name i use the uppercase because indicate that this one is constants the to do db okay db name. and then next um we have this the build db function fund build db and it requires context because the builder requires context and of course it returns the to do database right it goes like that and then we simply copy and paste this builder control z control v in here okay um we have to fix uh something yeah that getting an error here first the get applications is from context you can simply delete and change it to context and then the to do db is simply use the the db name that we has been created previously in here and don't forget because these our uh, functions will return the database object yeah which is the db here therefore you just need to return db okay right now since you have the single function that call the database next check all the view model class and replace the previous hard-coded build database function with these new methods okay what i mean is um open the view model all the view model and then you delete this one and change it to um fall db equals and then you call the build db if you notice that um, this build db context is taken from the package of util and it requires the context so we send the get applications if you look the import here as you can see we import the util class where is it uh, this one see to come to the solution to do the util dot build db right so we import the functions and we use this we use that function in here just copy and paste and do the same for the clear task now um you use the same function from the utility class utility files i mean and do the same thing for the detail to view model copy paste in the add to do and you will be okay right um now we add the soft pack button means we going to add a a, a pack button on the top left corner of applications that initialize the back actions okay so um in order to do that you open the main activity should be in here and first we going to create this nav controller private pri private far init far uh, nav controller nav controller okay and then secondly in the on create you find the nav controller this nav controller navigations dot find nav controller and then it's from this activity r dot id dot fragment sorry host fragment so this one is the um, the host fragment that you use in your in the main activity layout as you can see if you look if you open the activity with micro you 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 will have this host fragment okay next um so we set up the nav act the action bar with uh with uh the, the nav controller we already have it in here so we call the navigation ui dot set up action bar with controller this and then we pass the nav controller and then we override on support navigate up boolean and then we return the navigations 
UI dot dot a navigate up nav controller and we don't have drawer so we set it as null here without drawer yeah okay and that's it for the soft next we continue with the layout okay um in um in this case we going to add the priority radio button it means that all our to do now have priority and it goes from high priority medium priority and to the low priority it means that all the high priority to do must be displayed on the top of the list okay and the lowest priority to do should be appear at the bottom of the list okay so that that's that's uh, what we're going to create we add this priority field um to complete our to do data okay so uh let's reopen the create to do layout so we have what we have here is one uh uh is, is a enter title enter notes and we have these buttons okay let's um change the button to, to the bottom of your uh, page and we delete the constraint stop because i want to make this button uh, uh stay on the bottom of the pages we set 24 on every directions and make it match constraint so it goes like this okay because i want to put the radio button here so first uh do not drag the radio button yet uh, you need at first you need to drag the radio group radio group to here so after you drag the radio group uh you have to drag the radio buttons okay drag it inside the radio group okay do the same thing three times one two three okay drag it inside this radio group okay so um click click on the radio group and set id for it radio group priority radio group priority and make sure you attach it in the right way okay 24 match constraint 24 okay uh got that one right oh yeah i forgot this um text view okay i'm going to edit uh this text view should be name as priority so we add string value priority priority all right okay set style for it should be body one i guess yeah and put it under the enter nodes drag to the left set distance 24 16 and make sure the radio group attached under this text okay yeah just simple like that next um after you're done with your group now it's single radio button here uh, we change the id so at first you set the radio high at the very top of radio button radio high id revectors and then set the um strings value uh, radio high high priority it should be high priority yeah? high priority okay 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 next um this one the middle one should be uh, radio medium enter refactor change the text into the uh, medium priority medium priority all right okay okay and the last one radio low change the text to low priority low pri priority okay so uh, we have three radio button here and next um 
each radio button can have a tag value. It's handy to set value for each radio button, yeah. So um, in this case, we setting up a value of integer, yeah, from one to three, which is the high radius will have three, now uh, the three value for the tag. Um, this is the, uh, this is a way we are going to retrieve the value from radio button and then we're going to store it in our database. And later on, we can simply use the query order, order by priority. And therefore we can order the to-do list based on the priority value, which is range from one to three. Okay, I hope you understand this. And let's do that. Pick high priority and find the tag value. We set it as three. Medium priority should be two. And the low priority should be one. Okay. And as a default, check a selected radio button. We should select the high priority. So in 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 order to do that, um, we check this. Yeah, check the high priority. All right. And of course, next, uh, we are going to uh, set ID for this header, new to do. Okay, so look for the ID, change it to txt, uh, title to do, right, refactor. Uh, why I do that? Because I need to change it programmatically and it will be coming in handy later. I will explain that, yeah, in later. Okay, so therefore, because I want to change this title via program letter okay next um we going to create a new fragment uh if you notice that in previous example in last week example we have this to do list as you can see here we have checkbox and then we have a little pencil a button here this is an edit button so when we click this it's going to launch the edit to do fragment okay so we next we create the edit to do fragment right click the view new um fragment and choose the fragment blank okay um we name it as edit to do fragment yeah edit to do fragment okay and then press finish Oh yeah, because uh, in the edit to do fragment, uh, it used the same layout as the uh, create to do, as you can see here. Uh, instead of using new to do here, it will be named as edit to do. Yeah. So uh, because we use the same layout, I mean the same um, widget and object in the layout. Um, we have to change this one, this fragment edit to do here, into the fragment of create to do, okay? Because it used the same layout, okay? And it means that uh, we can safely delete the fragment edit to do here. Just press delete, okay? We don't use that, right? Now, um, next. Uh, as, as usual, yeah, we delete everything except on create view and then we create the on view created. Okay, let's do that. Delete everything. This one. Except the on create view. And we override the on view created. Okay. Next, um, the navigation graph. Remember, uh, we add new fragment. It means it's appear as a new destination in the navigation graph. So you open the navigation main XML, and then what you next need to do is um, drag and drop the new destinations. Yeah, here the edit to do fragment. We can do that easily by add click this plus button and then click this edit to do. Click here and then um, you can drag the arrow from this list to do fragment into the edit to do fragment, okay? So um, click on the actions or arrow here, and then we rename it as action, action, edit, to do fragment, okay? 
refactor. Now, um, oh yeah, you can um, set the animations fade in and fade out. So we you should we should put uh, where is the fade in? Okay, here, and we do the same thing. Actually, um, it not. It's it not necessary to add the fade out since the fragment we uh, or, uh, usually destroy it instead of calling the navigate to others. Yeah. So, okay. Next, um, we click on the edit to two fragment because we're going to add the argument. Yeah, the arguments. All right. Click on the argument here, and then you type UUID as the argument name. And the type of cost integer, yeah. Why is that? Um, because in our model, we have this primary key, which is UUID, and then because of that, we um, we use the adapter, and inside the adapter, we are going to send the particular task to do list positions dot UUID arguments to the edit. Uh, to do fragment okay so um from this list yeah from this list um and to navigate to the edit to do fragment this list must provide uh, the argument of uuid because in the edit to do fragment we are going to load the to do with have this uuid okay therefore we set the argument here Next, um, don't forget to rebuild the project. All right, done rebuilding. Next, um, we going to write programs that uh, trigger the navigation action from this fragment to this fragment. It means that from this adapter, adapter of list of to do, to the edit to do fragment. Okay, so you open the adapter and then um okay and then inside the on button view holder because we already have the uh, image edit you can set click listener on it set on click listener here right um uh, and we're going to call this action full action equals to do list fragment directions dot actions it's supposedly to have this action added to do okay let me check first okay i actually i forgot to rebuild the project so um after you done um change uh create a changes inside the navigation graph you should to build and then rebuild the project okay so after you done that you can have the directions to do this direction and then you can find this action edit to do fragment with the argument inside it. So it requires you to uh, to put a UUID here. Remember, the on bind view holder always rendered on its um, positions, on its item inside this to do list based on these positions. Okay, so you can call to do list with index of positions and then you can grab uuid from there okay and then we call navigations uh, navigate navigation dot find nav controller from it and we can call the navigate action all right okay now that's the first part the second part is we are going to edit this um tech task because um this one the delete task here should uh, trigger should execute it if we check the checkbox yeah we check the checkbox as you can see here there's two parameters the compound button which is um refer to the checkbox itself and the b is actually the boolean whether the checkbox is selected or not so it should be is checked better that yeah so um and then we can check that boolean if is check means it getting check it, get, it getting checked so we can run this adapter on click which is refer to um the fragment the to-do list fragment here 
and then as you can see it's calling the clear task or delete delete the 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 to do okay the selector to do okay now after you done um triggering the navigations from the edit uh, button now we handle the view model yeah remember there is no live data variable in the detail to do view model because in um in previous week we only use the detail to do view model to run at to do okay now we have to add the new live data into it because we are going to load the data and provide the data for the edit fragment right and and what you need to do is call or create this to do live data in top of classes for to do ld is actually mutable live data and it's a type of to do here right so we have a new live data and then we have this function fetch to uh, select yeah to select the correct to do uh, based on the uuid we provided provide in parameter here so um we use this launch coordinate to make uh the code whatever i read here uh, into the uh put in different thread in different main thread and then we call fall db as um build db from utility and we get the application by calling the this applications get applications and then we can run the select um single to do yeah select to do here which is we provide we provide the uuid and it will return the to do object okay so uh the return value should be um should be put inside this to do live data equals yeah to do ld dot value equals equals select to do okay that's it for the fetch now inside the editor to fragment so let's open it back this editor to fragment we are going to uh, initialize the view model so you go to the top private let in it for view model remember we use the same view model uh as the same as create to do model so it used the detail to do view model okay now we initialize in on view created by calling the for uh, i mean the view model equals the view model provider this dot get from detail to do view model class jeff java right next um after you done in instantiate or initialize the view model next um okay remember uh, we use the same um the same layout as the fragment create to do so it will be weird if we open the edit to do but the title name still use the new to do and of course the button still has this create to do captions so it will be weird okay so what you be going to do next is um rename or change the captions on the the title which is we can call with the text the title to do dot um text equals edit to do here and the button add button create dot text equals save changes yeah only use this on the edit fragment okay after you done that we are going to call the view model to fetch the data but before you do that first we have to read the uuid which is uh calling from bundle here and then um uh, we get from the arguments okay so here we use we create the variable uid equals edit to do fragment arguments dot from bundle uh, require arguments and then we can access the uuid 
and then we can call the view model dot fetch of UUID. Okay. Finally, we have observe observe view model functions called here, and then we you, you create this observe view model functions, right? Okay. And um, yeah, inside it, we observe the to do live data to do live data dot observe a uh, life uh, okay few life cycle owner observer like that and inside it uh, this will trigger if the data available and inside it we can access this um to do ld to grab to grab the sorry it yeah which is this one it to do to grab the titles and notes okay so what you're going to do is just update the title dot set text remember because this text the title is the uh, edit text yeah remember that the text the title is a kind of edit text you so you cannot directly use the dot text yeah you have to use the set text here to setting up the text inside it so we grab it from the title id dot title we do the the same thing for the notes set text id dot notes and finally for the radio button we set the correct one by inspecting the i uh, the it of priority oh okay i forgot i still not implement the radio button so just let it be like that okay so we're going to only to load up the title and notes here okay okay let's try that uh let's um hit the emulator okay okay um this is the result so when you click this add button as you can see here we have this little soft back button okay i remember i forgot to set label for its individual fragment here so we click the back button and if you notice we have this small edit button when you click it it loads up the edit to do fragment and it has this by carrot and also the test so uh uh for a moment we ignore the radio first and the safe changes is safe changes here it does nothing okay does not because we not implement it yet so we back again it goes to the to-do list and when we back again it will destroy the applications okay so uh, so let's continue uh for the models yeah ah. okay the do do model must be altered to provide a priority value that indicates how important the to do is yeah we all we already provide the layout the radio button priority now we have to prepare the data so that it can able to store the priority value okay so open the model the model we have here and then uh, we add the new field into it after this one add column column info name equals priority it it not not necessary actually oh yeah I forgot comma here right it not necessary because we create the same um priority um priority field name here so we have priority and then we set it as priority also so it's set it as integer all right okay next after we done that um because we have edit fragment means that user can edit the created to do previously and then it means that we have to update our dao to to uh, to have the update query okay so go to the to do dao and then we add one um query free query here so this one should be the update query update of the to do set the title equals title here 
comma, uh, we have nodes equals nodes, comma, we have priority equals priority, right? Where, remember, this is very important. We are updating based on the UUID. UUID equals um, UUID, right? So um, this is very important. Notice that there is no space after this uh, column and uh, parameter names, column parameter names, and so on. Okay, so uh, please have no space after that, okay? Right, next we create this the function, the following function, suspend fund, update, um, and starting from left here, it has this title as parameter, so we provide one, title which is string, notes which is string, okay, so it lo no longer error, yeah, so uh, make sure you have the same um a name here upper lowercase title lowercase title lowercase notes lowercase notes and it's in order yeah um it's strictly strictly use the same order after the one the third the third part is the priority priority which is in the chair okay and finally the uuid here uuid which is also in the chair right so we have this query update next um the migrations uh, remember whenever you make adjustment to your entity data class whether it's renaming the field or adding a new field deleting a new field or changing the data type you have to do the migrations and of course, you have to do the not migration if you add a new table, yeah, new data class. So um, we are going to set the database migrations. Um, you need to do two things. First, you have to define the migration policy or method, and then you have to increase database version by one. Remember, every changes you have to increase database by one, and and then the final one, the final step is add the migration method into the database builder functions. Okay, let's do the first step. Define migration policy, okay? In this case, because um, if you see this in the Dudu database, we provide the version ones. Means that if we alter the table, with, which is we add the priority fields, means that we have to change this to second versions, okay? and um, we have to provide the migration policy, this uh, method here, we have to create this method, and the uh, uh, best places to write that method is inside this util class, okay? So we call this util class, or you, you may you may create inside this to database, inside this component object, whatever you like, okay? So you can create the migration policy inside the uh, component object of to do database or you can write it inside this utility class all right so in here we called the fall we create a variable migrations from version one to two migrations from version one to two this one is abstract class so we call object here in kotlin it uh column uh my creations from one to two right so um inside it we alt enter the object implement member we grab that single function here and then we do something inside it okay so what's going to do here we call the database uh, uh, object here dot executed execute sql so the only SQL we have is altering the table of to do to do and then we add column priority integer All right integer priority integer and then the default value is three means that um the priority value will be three if you not provide any value in it yeah so it it, it changes the tree and it should be 
not null. All right, not null. Okay, why we set it as not null? Because as you notice in the model here, none of our field here can be null. If you want um, uh, the field here to be null, you have to provide something like uh, this, yeah, null, means that this uh, field can be null. But I don't do that, okay? So let me revert it to default one. Okay, so back to the utility, and that's it, yeah? That's the policy for migrating the database from version one to two, and then the room will execute this SQL, all right, to add the column priority uh, with data type of integer and default of uh, with three, number three, and it should be not now, okay? And then um, change the version. We already done that, the version here. The uh, third step is to adding the migrations inside the builder so let's open the utility as you can see here uh, before the build yeah you can add the migrations policy by uh, calling this one migration one uh, one two two if you have more than one migration you can add by adding comma here migration two two three migration three two four and so on and so on okay um, going to copy this, uh, you have to do the same thing with the build database, which is located in the to-do database. Uh, where is it? Here, okay. After build, before build, you call the migrations, okay. Build database, migrations, one to two, and build. All right, and finally, uh, we are going to fix the create and edit to do. Why? Because now our create to do fragment can um, accept can accept the the radio priority. Yeah, we already have the field. Okay, um, open the create to do fragment, which is this one, and then uh, look for the error. Yes, of course, there is an error. Why? Because um, um, because we now have one, two, three, uh, okay, three construct, uh, three item inside our constructor. So as you can see here, we have error. And if you look closely, the error is located in here, this part, when we construct the to-do object here, the final one should be uh, the priority number we we have to put number one two three yeah the priority is integer so how do we get the priority so remember the priority is um uh is called or is uh getting the value from the radio button so we can access the radio button by using the uh, view dot find view by id radio First, we get the radio button, yeah? And then we can grab the radio button from the radio group priority. Remember, the radio group is a container of the radio button, right? The good things about radio group is it can know uh, what ID, what radio button ID is uh, selected. So you can... Uh, call this property, check out radio button ID, it will return the ID, yeah, it's going to return the ID of selected radio button, okay? And then by calling find view by ID means that we finding uh, the radio button with this ID and it will return the radio that being selected. So this is the radio that being selected. So by that, we can, grab the value, the priority value, one, two, or three, by calling the tag. Remember, we we set up the tag, right? That's it, that's it. We have, we now use it in our codes here. Radio.tag dot, um, because um, the priority is integer, you have to convert it to integer, but the fastest way to do that is first to convert to the string and finally call the to integer, okay? It's a little bit weird, but it's faster, faster to do this instead of 
calling the parse 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 integer okay radio dot tag to string dot to integer we convert it from string to integer All right now um next one uh we open the edit to do fragment okay remember we already pro, uh, set up or populate the titles and notes and now we are going to populate the priority okay by selecting or checking the it dot priority which is is um three means that uh we uh call the radio high dot is checked equals true else if it dot priority equals to radio medium dot is checked equals true and else here radio low dot priority ah sorry is checked equals true right okay so you can change the whole things if here with the uh, when okay it's it will looks um looks less codes looks tidy okay let's do that change it to this um alternatives programs okay so we use, use when when three two and one based on that information we change the radio button okay and um finally um since our to do has data provide with data now uh we have to change the order yeah into the list yeah so it's very easy yeah um the high priority should be uh, put on the top and the low priority should be put in the top bottom so to uncomplex this simply adjust the select query with order command yeah order by priority so you open the to do dao and look for the select all to do here you put the order command order by priority descending why we call descending because it's going to order in descending uh order yeah descending order so the high number is on top the low number is on to, to the bottom okay to prove that right to prove that i want to add something in my adapter here okay let's let's put the priority number inside the check task here so we call to do list to do list positions and we grab the priority okay so um let's check whether the order is correct or not okay so let's hit the play button okay um this is the result uh as you can see here we put number in here in here to show the um the uh, priority number so let's add one the low task blah 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 Okay, let's set it as low priority create to do and we see the low task in the very button okay so um you may add another order by yeah you can use more than one order um maybe first you select uh you order by number and secondly you may order by um alphabetic titles yeah whatever you like okay so um that's uh that's the way we add the um what is called priority yeah when you edit the load task here so it's uh correctly shows that this one is low priority and so on okay so that's it how you alter the table doing the migrations and put the result on screens on your applications and that's it okay so finally um the homework you need to do this uh, for your homework uh, what is your homework is uh, first you have to alter the table the to do table by adding a new field uh, the field name is is done and it should be integer and the default value of is done is zero not null okay and every time user check the task yeah check the task update the to do table which is the field is done from zero to one means that the is done is uh, default value is zero check
change it to one okay for the particular task that you check okay do not delete the to do okay the default operation is deleting the to do right so uh, change that moreover in the to do list only shows the is done which is equal to zero only shows the to do where the is done is zero yeah that is split on this okay it means that um uh the to do that you deleted or the to do that you check is not deleted it's still on your database but it not shows that's it because in later time i will implement the what is called the filtering list that can be changed to see the done to do that you have already checked or the ongoing to do still on the list okay so uh, that's that's why the, it's, it's the reason why we adding this um field all right so uh maybe you're wondering why we use integer instead of boolean okay if you know the answer please drop the uh, drop the answer in, on the hangout chat the first person correctly answer these questions will get additional marks yeah and then it proves that you watch this video okay and for the submission do the commit and push on the github project set your github project url to public yeah uh, and from now on just set it public do uh, no need to invite me and then submit the github link or url to uls okay the do it is next week right okay thanks for watching uh, if you have any questions you can reach me at andrew at staff or chat me through hangout bye bye for now See you.